so that we don't get hurt. But that the 20% becomes 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles. It's bigger the amount of work you can do simply because you built up the volume. So the volume does not equal your performance, but volume of running sets the foundation. That's why we call it base or foundational training to be able to do workouts that really do move the needle later. The skill you're talking about is my weakness is being patient. You're talking about like progressively building up, you know, like it's the five miles. That's the hard 20% or yeah. It's how do we, how do we, how do we work on patience? How do we get more patient when I'm running and almost like, just be happy and content with, you know, ticking it off week on week, you know, not saying you're asking me to tell you how week. to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> how do, uh, progress equals happiness. So, um, the yeah. first thing that you said is you said, it's my weakness. So can't help you because that's a statement of fact. It's not true, but it's a belief that you have. So if it's your weakness, it's your weakness. What are you going to do? What if it weren't your weakness? What if it used to be your weakness? What if you're now more educated or intelligent or committed to doing things in a new way? What if you identify instead of having that be a weakness? What if you I just, maybe it has been in the past. What if you just change the way that you talk to yourself about it? I now know better because I've repeated the same mistake many times in the, in the past. I now have more information and I'm going to kill this next season because I know what I'm doing even better now. And so I'm going to, whatever, slow it down and change my take a longer time for my training cycle, whatever it is. And you could probably get behind that. But when you say it's my weakness, I know you didn't like plan to say that. It's just kind of like a subconscious way. You're trying, you're communicating Freudian something to you, but the words that come out, they say what you believe. So do you believe that it's your weakness or could it be true that it, it used to be your weakness, but you're even better than you've ever been now? Could that be true? When my training isn't effective, it's my it's my weakness, but it's not always my weakness. Like there's definitely been great Wait weeks a second. and months. You're going to ruin this whole thing. You just said it was your weakness. And now you said, it's not always my weakness. Aha, progress. But you see like, seriously, which one is true? It's not always been your weakness, but that's a step towards moving towards being the person who you're striving to be. Sometimes I identify with, oh yeah, I'm impatient and I like to get things done. But okay. if I take a step back, thousand foot view, I'm like, I don't want to be an impatient person. I want to be calm, have serenity, you know, and just kind of have more faith that doing that base building, doing the right training, it yeah. will, I know it will result in getting me progress. Okay. So the word you used there was faith, have more faith. What would you need to have more faith in? That's a tough question. Yeah, take a second. But this is important. Like this is where the changes starts. Faith in in the process, you know? Like faith in showing up, adherence to a plan, faith in getting, you know, the right sleep, right nutrition, faith in doing my okay. my gym, faith in the work that's being done. Because because the work is being done and I'm like I am a hard worker. I always I will always work hard. So I don't even need to like have this impatient, like forceful approach. If I'm calm, if I take a step back and, and have more faith, it'll, it'll result in better progress because I won't, I won't be forcing a, a, an outcome. I won't be forcing a result. Well said, Ross. Um, stop forcing. Can you force, think of another area of your life. Let's take running just on the back burner for a second. Let's say that you're single and there's a pretty girl and you want to date her. Can you force your way into that relationship with her or does that repel her? Yeah. If I was advising someone else, I'd be like, yeah, abandon that plan of force. <laughs> better to attract her than force her. It's like you get to jail for force. <laughs> this is jail time here. So it doesn't work there. How about with sales? You have a program, you have a coaching business, you have a a market that sells candy bars and you force it. Yeah, I can, I can, think, of, I can think of a, a company that forces sales. Like they'll call me and I'm like repelled by them. Yeah, I don't like forcing. Right. How about health? Can you force your health? Oh, I've got cancer. I'm going to get it out. And actually people do do that, right? Because they'll use um, chemo and radiation. They're trying to like force it out. Okay. What about a longer term approach of an entire life 
five, six, seven, eight decades of even healthier choices. It's a completely different paradigm, but that's, that's not force. So you can take the same action. Here's the key. This is mindset. I said at the beginning of this, I said mindset, I like to call it emotion set because you can take the same action and someone looking at you from the outside would say, oh, Ross just did that five mile workout at 7.30 pace. Yep. And one of those ways you could force yourself to do it. So you don't want to go out and run. You're tired. Whatever. You force yourself to do it. And you did five miles at 7.30 pace. An alternative could be you still run five miles at 7.30 pace, but instead of forcing it, you... Let's pick a different emotion. You joyfully do it. You choose to do it. You delight in doing it. It's not force. It's still the same action, but the experience that you have, one of them is going to burn you out and maybe make you angry and impatient and you come over. Uh, one of them is by choice. It feels good. It's kind of an upwards energy. One of them feels kind of light. I get to go run. I love running. It's such a great day. I'm going to do five miles. Some people can't even run five feet. Some people are paralyzed. Some people are dead. How lucky am I to be able to run? Oh my God. Five miles at 7.30. I used to not be able to run three miles at 10 minute pace. Look how much I've progressed. Gratitude, gratitude, focusing on, and those emotions. And it sounds like, oh, gratitude. I'll just go out and do the workout. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't say don't do the workout. Same run, five miles, 7.30 pace. No change to the run. One of them done in what I just described there. One of them done, I have to run. I don't want to run, but I'm a badass who forces it because I have these goals and that's... Uh, same run, much different experience. One of those runners will still be here a year from now or 10 years from now. One of them, eh, probably not. And even if they are, they're going to they're going to train really hard and then need to recover and then really hard and need to recover. And these like big seasons off for inconsistency in their training. It's not going to lead to a breakthrough in performance. Find an elite runner who's using force like that. And you might actually see it uh, with like younger middle distance runners sometimes. Uh, honestly, like Jakob Ingebrigtsen comes to mind. I don't know the guy. He's a fantastic runner. Oh my God. He kicked my butt across the board. Um, his, his mind seems to be like more in aggression. I don't know the guy. He also has like a lot of publicity and like fame around him. It's maybe, maybe that's not even fair to say. Andrew, would that but, be in contrast to Kipchoge's mindset? Absolutely. Put Kipchoge and Jakob Ingebrigtsen together, like in your mind together. They seem to be experiencing different emotions. Okay, fair enough, because Ingebrigtsen is fast. We'll see. We'll see what his career pans out in 10 years, 20 years. I don't know. Probably pretty well. But there's just a difference. Kipchoge has, uh, you know, Ingebrigtsen, he actually does have a world record now, but he doesn't have a world record in the outdoor 1500 or the 5000, which are, I think probably the most important races. I don't know. He does have a world record, to be fair. But Kipchoge... Multiple world records, multiple Olympic gold medals, huge longevity in the career. I mean, he was running in the 90s, uh, world class on the track, sub two hour marathon. I mean, golly gee. And Kipchoge, when he's at the end of his race, he's smiling. He's hurting, but he's smiling. He crosses the finish line. He brought his wife to the Ineos uh, Breaking Two project. His wife had never been to one of his races. He brought her there. Because he's going to do this big thing. And he's running for more than himself. Kipchoge, what was the theme of that race? Do you remember? I do not. I do not. It was no human is limited. Kipchoge came up with that. And he wasn't running for himself. He doesn't get a world record. It doesn't count. He did it as an exhibition to show that no human is limited. And he brought his wife, who had never been to one of his marathons, brought his wife there. Because it gave him like joy to be able to do this and present that to his family and to the world. And he crosses the finish line and he hugs his coach and he celebrates with his family and he's full of smiles. And we look at some other athletes, normally in other sports, but a little bit in track and field now, where it's more like trash talk and like push really hard and uh. hey, it can work, but which life do you want to live? It can work. It's less, I believe it's less likely to work because you're less likely to be here long term. But even if it did work, even if it worked and you got the time on the clock, did you like the life that you lived? I don't know. 
Hey, I hope you liked that video here. Now, if you want to watch the entire interview, you can click the link down below and watch the whole interview that I did with Ross. And if you haven't picked up your copy of Run Elite, Train and Think Like the Greatest Runners of All Time, go ahead and pick up a copy on Amazon or Audible. I know you're going to love it. It's going to help you smash your times in any race from the 5K to the marathon and the ultra marathon distances. Now, if you're getting something from this video, thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button. With a small channel like us, it really helps to make even more videos for you. So if you're liking it, go ahead and hit that bell, hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.